Well, my high school reunion was so much fun. Hey there, Michael. Oh my God, Phil Bearer. Hello, Taniqua. Mm -hmm. What is this? Jenna, everyone here loves you very much, but because of your drinking, we feel like we're losing you. Is this an intervention? We all agree it's gone too far. Kenneth, Richard Esposito, your two psychics. Wait, you're seeing another psychic? I mean, I knew that. Tracy, you are going to die. What? No! When I tell you who I'm dating, Squeaky From, she is difficult. Anywho. I have the results of your physical. Tracy, you are going to die. What? No! You have no reflexes, your blood tastes like root beer, and some of your bones appear to have vanished. Now, I've only ever seen this kind of thing on dead people during Operation Desert Storm. I actually wrote a report on it, but my commander refused to pass it on up to Saddam. <laughs> Kooky times. Wow. If only Tracy were here, he'd be like, damn woman, I want to make love to your neck. Don't do impressions of other races. Roger that, Angie. And I treated her like garbage. Well, then why don't you apologize to her? She's right behind you. <gasps> Judy, you're so beautiful now. Oh. Psst, look at that loser. Sitting all alone and sad. He's like me yesterday. I hate him. I don't know, Lemon. I'm actually starting to feel sorry for the poor bastard. Oh, boy, you got your period? Woo! Business junk. More business juice, please. Tracy, it's come to my attention that you know Kim Jong-il. And obviously, I'm concerned about my wife, and I want to know what she's going through. Please, hold nothing back. OK. But you might not like what I have to tell you. Kim Jong-il sometimes shoots in a close-up too much. Comedy lives in a wide shot. And also, this is gonna be rough. His acting notes are often vague. Okay, I could help this girl or destroy this monster if I could just tell whether she's vicious or vulnerable. That's the problem. She's a teenage girl. She's vicious and vulnerable. She might be completely lying, like when I was 15 and told everyone at my school that I'd already gotten my period. Or she could be in real trouble, like when I was 17 and finally got my period at a very loosely supervised petting zoo. You've got the initiative. How do you keep it? By making a second first impression. You're going to wear dark colors with a single power accent. Every hair in place, hair movement, is a sign of weakness. And whatever you do, don't speak first. 90% of negotiations are lost by the person who speaks first. Because what is speaking a sign of? Weakness? You, out, fired. You're not all the way divorced? Well, we've been legally separated since 1989. It's been a nightmare, Lemon. I mean, one minute you're newlyweds, making love on the floor of the Concord, then the next year, lawyers are fighting over who gets to keep the box your dog defecates in. You taught your dog to poop in a box? Bianca did, but I want that box. Ah. It's Lloyd. Oh, my God, Pete. Thank God it's you. Liz, what's wrong? I <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Thanks to decades of partying, Jenna's internal organs will get you nothing on the black market. She's an emotional train wreck. Daddy, why are you doing this? A seventh grade education, hepatitis D, bullet in jaw, fatwa, credit card debt, wanted by the Yakuza. Jenna Maroney is worth $2,000. Fine. In Arizona, two grand will buy me a castle and a pillowcase full of meth. But then he scores a basket, even though he's not a wolf anymore. We're here with Tracy Jordan, who just recounted, by the way, the entire plot of the movie Teen Wolf. What? Oh, hold on, Tracy. My producers are telling me there is breaking news. The Asian financial markets have just opened to a huge sell-off. And we're going to switch to that story right now. Good. I'm glad I'm here. Your thoughts, Tracy Jordan, on how this is going to impact Wall Street. Larry, I'm not an expert. But I do have a strong opinion. New York, as we know it, will no longer exist tomorrow. Expand on that. Look, I grew up here, Larry, in the days before Starbucks. 
And if Wall Street crashes, it'll be the 1970s all over again. People will get mean. The streets won't be safe. It'll be graffiti everywhere. And the movies will only cost $3. Tracy Jordan saying three serious things and then a joke. Kenneth, I need your help. You know Tracy quite well, wouldn't you say? Oh, I know Mr. Jordan like the back of my stepfather Ron's hand. I know all his ATM pin codes. I know when he's cranky and needs his binky. I know that by binky, he means 1970s pornography. So how is he functioning without you? Oh, I'm still doing everything for him. Uh, tonight, I have to ride my bike over to his house in New Jersey to hold his hand during Lost. That's it, Kenneth, don't you see? You're our ace in the hole. How dare you? Um, so gentlemen, is there any history of mental illness in your family? Oh, don't get me started. My cousin killed everyone at his job. Uh, how about you, Milton? Uh, the greens are sharp as a tack, right to the end. Which makes the end all that much more terrifying. My father died screaming. Attention, everyone. Strike update. I am happy to report that Local 415 has joined our cause. I think we should just give up. Yeah, Brandon's right. They are a blanket union that includes mall Santas, horse whisperers, and bucket drummers. Hey, dudes. I'm organizing a viral protest on Twitter and YouTubes. Anyone wants to get in on that, just write down your social security numbers. I'm sorry, Brandon. What show are you assigned to again? Donahue. This is Wesley. This is Nurse Jamakaya from Dr. Kaplan's office. So here's the thing. You need to come in today so the doctor can check them teeth, man. Oh, is there something wrong? My checkup isn't for another week. He thinks that tooth might have some bad mojo in it, Jesse. Might you be available to come in around 1.30, me lad? You're going Irish. OK, 1.30 is fine. Cool runnings, man. Bobsled. <gasps> See, Miss Lemon, I told you, everything <laughs> Ah, ah, stay away! I will bite you! Ah, ah. How is she? Well, she's fine and the baby's fine, but they put her on bed rest till her blood pressure goes down. Well, listen, Trey, if there's anything I can do, please let me know. There's one thing. Could you take care of Angie like a husband until this whole ass ache blows over? Absolutely not. What about you, Kay? I'm on it, sir. We've been offered a gate. What? What are you doing back here? Come on, let's go. Oh, we'll go. We'll go back to the terminal. In the lounge with the reclining chairs and the turkey wraps. Turkey wraps. Here's what we're gonna do. You've probably never seen breasts before. So I'm gonna lean over this desk and you're gonna give me a new page jacket. Please, I breastfed till I was 11. So I've forgotten more about a woman's chest than you'll ever know. But. I'm on TV. I said good day. No, you didn't. Well, I meant to. Kenneth, I have something I need to tell you. Last night, when you left, Hazel came on to me because she wants me to put her in a movie. Hazel, is this true? Yeah, it is true. Not what I said was I would never sleep with Tracy for a part in a movie. Oh, please, you would love for me to fall asleep on top of you. Come on, Kim Moore washers and dryers. Who are you gonna believe here? My best friend. Not really. And my girlfriend. You wish. Well, I always believe you, sir, because you're on television. And webisodes. But yesterday you told me our women are queens and they're always right, which means I should believe Hazel. But that would make you wrong, Mr. Jordan. And you've never been wrong about anything before. It's a blessing and a purse. You can't both be right. Unless Hazel is always right. But only because you said so, Mr. Jordan. Which means you're right, too. And both sides being right is like kissing your sister. A wonderful treat. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha!